The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? 
he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will not with him also give everything else. Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of our Lord. Thank you. 
So um, I did want to mention that. I did want to mention for my kids and for you know, maybe some some of the other kids that they could spend a whole lot of time with her. But it was it was an experience that we, you just never you just never forget. And it's, and it's I could sit up here and probably tell fifteen different times that that experience was for me. But yeah, it's really cool. Um, Thank you, Todd. Did you hear it? Yeah. Isn't it time to just say, say something? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Welcome, all of you. It's wonderful to be here and to hear that rain. And I thank you all for coming. And certainly, I thank you, Bob and Chris and Mickey. Paul, Debbie, Brett, all of you for the kindness that you have shown while we are gathering. And thank you, Janelle, for sharing your ministry with me. It's, I want to thank you for all you do for this community that we all love so dearly. Shortly after he died, excuse me, retired, uh, Tom Broca wrote a book which I'm sure many of you read, Our Greatest Generation, it's called. And in that book, he traces the history of many of the uh, veterans of the world wars and what they did in unstinting devotion to our country. And then they came back and they settled in communities and they distinguished themselves through service, through agriculture, through business, through medicine, through education. Now, last night I told the group a little bit about our beloved Jeff, our oldest brother in the Emerson family, and some of the distinguished service that he had during the liberation of the Orient in the Second World War. And I said it would relate to something else that I wanted to share with you today. And that is simply this, that he could not do it alone. All of us here know the rest of the story. We're celebrating it today. How devoted and how diligently Miriam added to Jeff's service. I am especially indebted because as a young boy, and only the logic that comes to young boys, I decided to run away from home. And while I was gone, the neighbor lady saw me and took me back to the Everson Farmstead in Wacom Township. And in that situation, the lady handed me over to Marion, who was staying with us. She had her new little baby, Joanne, and she was one of the war brides who came and lived with us while Jeff was in the service. In that instance, of course, I deserved some punishment for not telling anyone that I had gone. But Marion took me in her arms and held me, and I suppose wiped away a tear or two. It's the dawn of my memory, but I remember it well, that she held me as she took me in the house, and we sat by the table and had a glass of milk and a cookie. Now, as I came to realize many years later what a blessing this was and how it opened my eyes to the devotion and the dedication of these people who added to the service of their loved ones who were overseas. And I'm so grateful that I was one who had a chance to be blessed by this, our greatest generation. And I invite you today as we honor Marianne's memory, to think about how we too can be a blessing with this caring, loving way that she had. And I invite you to dedicate a moment 
as we are together, to the possibility that we too might someday be part of the greatest generation. Thank you. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Mary's niece, Sue, who is one of my fantastic quilters in this church, shared a memory of her aunt with me. Though I know she has shared many other things about her over the past year and a half that I've served here. I've come to know Mary as the one who owned the drive-in and that was very special to this community. Sue shared this memory of how on 4th of July they always waited for Mary and Jeff to come to the park because she always wanted to see what she was wearing. Apparently, she was a very spiffy dresser, but in particular, she wore heels a lot, and those heels would be a variety of colors, and she wanted to know what color heels that she had put on. That is a great memory of someone to have. How you were just so excited and del took delight in what that part of that person's personality was. We hear the good news. We hear the love of Christ in her life. If we know and believe Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said we will know our Heavenly Father. The basic truth of our faith and belief in God is knowing and believing that Jesus loves us, loves us to give us forgiveness and redeem us, not through our own merit, but through selfless love by coming to the earth to die on the cross for our sins and rising from the grave to defeat death. We learn and believe as truth in our walk as children of God, who we are as the body of Christ. Now when I do the nursing home worship services, there are two people who always had to have one song in particular every single worship service. And that would be Marion. And Beatrice. They always demanded the song. Well, maybe not demanded, but they would start singing it. Um, and we would sing, Jesus Loves Me. The words of Jesus Loves Me are a profound statement of faith to what we believe. From the first verse, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to hear me long. They are weak, but he is strong. We can hear and proclaim the message of good news that Jesus does love you as it's written in scripture. The second verse of the song reminds us of the love to us as children of God with the words, Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. The song continues in reminding us that Jesus' love extends to the actions of heaven's gate being wide open for all of us who are forgiven and redeemed from our sin because Jesus washed away our sins. 
but it's the last verse that holds meaning for us today. Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. When at last I come to die, he will take me home on high. Jesus is with us throughout our days, ever present. And when we do die, Jesus is still with us. God's love and commitment to us does not waver in any point. And that is why it was such a beloved song to continue singing with her every visit, every nursing home worship service. As beloved baptized children of God, our life does not end with death here, but we hold on to the promise of hope in Jesus Christ with his death and resurrection, because we too will have a resurrection like his. We will dwell forever in the house of the Lord, where rooms have been prepared for us, because we believe in the truth of the words, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you. Amen. As you're able, let us stand for our next song to proclaim the good news through our singing. It is in the hymnal, hymn number 623, Rock of Ages.
church, we pray together. Uh, at the response of Lord in your mercy, respond back, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of the saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give courage and faith to Mary's family and to all who mourn and take time to celebrate her life. Give them a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage, who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of all grace, we give you thanks by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The family members will be sharing the Lord's Prayer with us. Father Lord, who son er i himmene, heier vår det ditt navn, kom i ditt rike, skje din vilje som i himmelen, så og på jorden. Gjør oss i dag vårt daglig brød, og forlatt oss vår skyld som vi har forlatt av våre skyldene. Og led oss ikke inn i fristelse, men frøds oss fra det ånde. Ti røkket er ditt, makten og er i eilighet. Amen.
Even though we take time this day, take time to celebrate her life, we know that every day we celebrate her life and the impact she had on our lives, rejoicing with Christ in the days that she was with us. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Miriam. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. We will join together in our final hymn. Afterwards, uh, we will not be going to the cemetery at all. The family will do that at a later time. So we will adjourn to the fellowship hall. All are welcome there. Let us sing together our final hymn, How Great Thou Art, hymn number 856.